Hi everyone, this is Mary Ann from Homemade by Giggles and I am going to be walking you through the assembly of the Hermit Crab pattern that is posted on my blog with removable shells. So here is the Hermit Crab I made when I developed the pattern and it's currently got the spiral shell on it and as you can see on the pattern there are a few other shells. We also have what I called the puff shell which can go on to the crab attached to his tail like that. There's the puff shell view. I also have what I call on the blog a snail shell, which is kind of like a conch shell. And again, it just tucks over top of the tail. Like so. And you can have fun making sort of whatever shells you want and whatever designs you want, whatever colors you want. And it's a fun little thing that you can play with. So today in the video, I'm going to cover the assembly of the entire crab. I have made the pieces already. And then I will also show you the assembly of the spiral shell, which is this shell here, just to show you how I stitch it together. And this should hopefully answer any questions that people had about the assembly. And I'll kind of talk about the creation of the pieces along the way as well. So to get started, all you need for your assembly, other than your pieces from the pattern that you've made, is a tapestry needle and some scissors. Now with the tapestry needle, I like to use one with a blunt end and a pretty wide eye here, so it's easy to thread the yarn through. I prefer the metal ones to the plastic ones just because I find that the plastic ones, they can get, uh, they can get bent and they can break as well. Okay, so the first step is to sew the belly onto the body. Now usually what you would do is you would put something to cover up the bottom here. So the bottom, this is the bottom of the body and you can see there's a little opening here. And so what we'll do is we will put the belly and sew it on top of there. It doesn't matter where on the ball you put it, but I think it makes sense to me to have it here so that we can then go ahead and cover up that part. I also think that sometimes when you're doing your decrease rounds, there tend to be more gaps. So by putting the belly over top, you're covering up those gaps and making a nice seamless looking, uh, seamless looking unit here. So I've threaded my needle and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck the center of the belly thread underneath so that we don't have to hide it at all. And I'm simply going to go underneath a full single crochet there and then up through the single crochet here. We can ignore this tail because we'll get rid of it afterwards. Back down through. This is how I like to attach all my items. And if you've gone through my, my beanbag owl assembly, you'll see that same technique. So I go up through the single crochets in the belly, back down through the next one, and then go around the body of a single crochet on the body. And I just hold it in place here, and I just keep working all the way around. Then when you get close to the end here, like I am, I've just got one more stitch to go down here. And you want to secure it. So what I do is I go behind the stitch, and then I usually go back up so that I'm working with the same color as what my loose end will be, like this. Then I simply tend to go around a stitch inside the same color, Pull it almost tight so that there's a loop. Put the yarn back through there. And then simply go underneath and go kind of as far as you can distance wise. Whoops. Pull that yarn through so that that just disappears. Now what you do is you pull a little bit tighter. Pull this yarn really tight. And snip it off right at the base. And then when you massage it, that loose end will go underneath and be hidden there. So then you don't have to weave in the loose end later. There's no reason you can't hide it behind there. So everything just hides behind these pieces that you assemble. And so for this strand that's coming off the body, that was from the end of the body itself, 
Again, with this one, you don't even have to secure it because it's already secured inside there. I would simply just take it underneath this whole thing, or you could even take it all the way through the body if you want to, whatever you want to do. I would go right under here, and I don't know, just pull it out anywhere where there's the orange color thread. Again, pull tight, snip right at the base, be careful not to cut any other threads. And then when you massage it out, you'll have your belly all assembled on your crab body. Now in this pattern, uh, I used a smaller hook this time than when I created this bigger guy, so I'm expecting to get a smaller hermit crab, which I think will also be cute. But what we've made here is the body with the belly, body with the belly. And if you refer to the blog, the next piece will be attaching the tail centered over the magic ring of the body. So the belly will sit here and then the tail will sit here, sit here and come out like this. So here is our tail. And what I'm going to do is just has the one loose end. So the tail is very important because this is where you attach all of the shells. So this is really, its function is to hold the shells in place. So we want to make sure that it's a very secure connection because you'll be pulling on it a lot. You'll be pulling on it when you're pulling the shells on and off. So we want it to be centered, the bottom here, over the magic loop start of the body there. So where we started doing our rounds there. So I like to just kind of press it in and make sure that it looks about right. But yeah, centering it is perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around this sort of push out, which is the last six single crochets here. And I'm going to put it around sort of the outside of that magic ring, just so it's not secured at a single point, it's secured sort of at six points around. So to start, what I would do is, again, just go under a stitch here, just to get it in the right sort of spot. Then pick any one of the stitches around here, go underneath it as well, and pull them together. And get everything centered the way you want it to be. So I want these two centers to come together here. But for ease of being able to see it, I'm going to bring it up here like this. Oops, go under the next one. And just always keep your eye on the middles here and make sure that they are going to come together. That's how you can make sure you don't sort of get caught up. I uh, tend to go counterclockwise when I'm going around. I don't know why that is. I don't know if there's any magical rhyme or reason to that, but that's what I tend to do. So the next stitch here. So I'm just following the circles on both, on both pieces and grabbing one stitch at a time from each of them. That seems pretty strong, so I've gone all the way around there. And now all I need to do is secure and hide. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring it under into the body. I could also just bring it up into the tail. Again, pull it almost all the way in the same loop I just went through. Bring your needle through, then pull that tight, and that makes a little, a little knot there. And then go into the hole, a hole right, right close to it and then give it some length, I don't know, like that maybe. Pull it all the way through, pull it extra tight, snip it right at the base without cutting any of the stitches on the actual product. Then when you massage it out, that end is just gone. So there we have it. We've got our uh, body with the belly attached and the tail is secured on there too. Excellent. The next piece of the instructions is to sew the head under the body at the angle of the picture. So if we kind of look at our reference crab here, its neck is close to the edge of the belly and there's some space here because some of the shells take some space. So if we try to put the neck just up above, above the edge of the, of the belly, somewhere right, maybe right here. So that's what we're aiming for. And again, there's no right or wrong way right now because really, this is all kind of in a line. 
But this is the first piece where the placement will sort of shape how your crab will look. So I've just threaded the needle. Again, you'll want to attach here because this is the the finish end where you uh, where you bind or where you fast, fasten off. So it's not quite as smooth and seamless looking as the top. So we'll leave the top to be the part that faces out. So we want to attach it maybe right about there so that it's closer to the belly than it is to the tail. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around this kind of loop here on the outside of it so that I'm securing it at six different points. And I'll find six points around here so that it makes sense. Again, attaching two colors together when they're the same, or attaching two pieces that are the same color. It's not that difficult to do. The accuracy isn't that important. On this one, we do want to try to make it so that it lands where we want it to land on the overall piece. And you know what? If all else fails, try a placement, take a look at it, and before you um, secure it and hide the end, just take a look at the placement. And if you don't like it, you just go ahead and pull it back out, which can be tricky when it's all the same color to find the right piece to pull. But you can even clip the end if you need to and start with a fresh piece of fresh piece of yarn. So the next step is to sew the eyes onto the head so they point upwards. So again, some people might put pipe cleaners inside these tubes. These are just tubes, they're hollow. You can put a pipe cleaner in so you can adjust them and where they look. I'm not going to do that here, but if you want to, you totally are welcome to. Uh, and it might make for a, a more bendable, more customizable look. Uh, I use six millimeter safety eyes for these. And the reason I use six, I normally use nine, but I use six here because the base of the safety eye needs to be able to fit inside this tube. So I put it in after the third round because otherwise you won't really be able to get it up and in here in order to clip it. So for people who don't know what a safety eye is, you can Google it, but basically there's a clip on the back here so that kids can't pull this out. There's no way for them to get it out and, uh, and choke on the small parts. So we want our eyes to go, if we look at our reference here, we want them to go so that they sort of both point up in the same direction from the head. So if we assume that our crab will sit roughly like this, we want to put maybe one right to the right to the left of the magic loop and one right to the right. And what I found works nicely, I didn't stuff this, I found that I just simply squeeze it at the bottom and assemble it kind of more in an oval shape than a circle shape here. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them so that they finish at what I would call the center. Uh, if you drew a line right across here, they finish there and they're squished together. And that way they'll be looking up. So then I will secure this. So I'm so happy with the placement. If you're not confident in the placement, I recommend you wait and secure it after you have your second eye in place. So that way if you want to change it, that'll be easier. Pull tight and done. Now my second eye will be a repeat. Okay, so here is my crab with the eyes attached and you can see that they're kind of pointing up and outwards and they look really cute. And the next part to do is the claws. Okay, so it's time to attach the claws onto the hermit crab body. So what we want to do with the claws is we want them to come forward like this and sort of rest and help support them but also look very cute at the same time. So you want the sort of thumbs of the claws to point into the body. And how I sew these on is again, I squeeze this. This one, there's no batting or stuffing in the arm itself. There's in the claw, but not in the arm part. So I sew this closed. And what I'm gonna do is actually sew it on here and attach it flat so that it's connected, not just at the very end of the arm, but it's also connected a little bit into the second row of single crochet here, just to help secure it in place. So to do this, I will thread my yarn onto my needle. 
Again, so we want the thumb to go inwards towards the belly. So I'm gonna squeeze it like this. We're gonna attach it this way onto the side. And you wanna do it so that the tail will stick up a bit, because that's where the shell will be. And you want this to be touching the tabletop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach it right about here. And you may wanna pin it on in place so that you can kind of remember where you're going. But what will be important is making sure the angle of the claw is the same on both sides. So I'm actually going to sew this in place. I'm going to grab the stitch. I'm kind of eyeballing where I want that to be. And then I'm going to whip stitch it. I keep calling it a whip stitch. I don't know if that's the right term for it. But basically, I'm going to go up through the arm and then through the body like that. And then the yarn is going to come back up here and help secure it in place. Again, I always make sure I'm going through actual holes and not splitting any of the yarn fibers. Feels a little bit forced, but that was all right to me. So now I'm just going to put it back down and make sure the thumb is facing inwards, which is good. Does the angle seem okay to me? I would say yes, although I could maybe move it back a little bit so that it comes out. You know what? I think that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of whip back over it again from, the, from where I ended back up to where I started just to double secure it since it's not going all the way around anything. Again, using this whip stitch makes it more of a seamless look when you're joining two pieces in the way that we are. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift up the arm and I'm going to hide the strand, secure it and hide it underneath here since usually that part won't even be exposed. Pull it tight, sit it close to the body. There we go. And I will do the other side as well and then come back to you. Okay, here is our crab so far. We are almost done the assembly and I think he's looking really good. You can see the claws are kind of helping prop him up. So we're about to attach the legs. And the legs are simply four tubes without being stuffed that look like this. And what you're going to do is we're basically just going to put them around the body. So what I tended to do when I did the, my initial pattern is just put one right beside, maybe one single crochet away from the claw, and then one single crochet away from that. And it basically will just go all the way around. So there are four total legs. So first thing I'm gonna do is thread my needle. This is why I recommend having one that has a kind of bigger eye because you do a lot of needle threading. And again, similar to the uh, claw arms, I'm just going to squeeze it and I'm going to whip stitch it in place so that it more points downwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the same circle here, the same round single crochet that these ones are on, roughly. So I'm going to go one single crochet over from where this was, uh, from where the claw was. And that's where I'm going to start my whip stitching. And again, what's more important than the placement is being consistent. Because when you're putting four of them in place, you want to make sure all four of them are consistently placed for how high up they are, 
um, and how far they go around the body. So what I might actually recommend doing is putting this leg on and then going and putting the opposite leg on the other side, beside the, beside the other claw. And then see how much space you have left to work with. So that was super simple. It looks very seamless. Let me just secure it. The thing, whoops, the thing I love about making little, little stuffies is that it's so easy to hide the threads. You don't have to weave in ends. You don't have to worry about things sort of popping out. Okay, so I'm gonna flip over to the other side and I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did first time. I'm gonna kind of smush this down. Remember, it's just a circle, so you can smush it any way you want. I'm smushing it so that my loose end, my tail here, um, of yarn is in the corner, so I can just easily start there. I'm going to go to where my crab, my claw is. I'm going to go over one single crochet and I'm going to start my whip stitching there. So there's the two legs on. So I've got two more legs to go on here. Showing you kind of the back view here. So what I want to do is I'm probably going to do yeah, one single crochet away from the previous legs. Okay, we are back and I have finished assembling the entire hermit crab from the pattern. So you can see here, he's got his four legs in the back, the tail, the two claws in the front, his head, and his two eyes. And he's done. Okay, so we have our hermit crab fully assembled now. It's got the claws, the head, the eyes, the body, the belly, the legs, and the tail. And he's all ready to go, and all he needs now is some decoration, some shells. So I can step through the shells that I have again. And again, these ones will be from the prototype that I showed you at the start. So that one I made with a bigger needle. So these shells won't necessarily fit. But this is what I call the spiral shell. And that's the one I'll show you how to assemble in just a minute. And it just slides over, so it's kind of tight to the tail. Then we have the one that I call on the blog the puff shell. The puff shell is pretty cool uh, because it has a hole in the middle. And then to put it on, you actually just push it over and kind of pull it in place. It's a little big for this guy just because I made it again with a bigger hook. But it's a beautiful little shell. So I've got it, this is a two-tone one, and I also made one single tone. Again, you can see the hole in the bottom, it just slides over the tail. This one I made when I was doing some additional details because some people were having issues with the puff shell in particular on the blog. So I have full, full instructions on there. So I really like the puff shell because it's nice and big. And you can do all sorts of fun different colors and designs and you can really make up anything you want, as long as it's meant to go over the tail and then it cinches in the bottom. Again, I'll show you my snail shell, which is kind of a conch shape. And I just kind of made it up on the fly. And again, at the bottom here, there's a hole. Hard to see because it's dark colors, but there's a hole here. So it's cinched in at the bottom. So it just simply slides over the tail and stays in place. You can say... There he is. Pull up a bit. So I'm going to show you my assembly of the spiral shell as part of the video. So to make the item itself, it's actually just 101 chains, and then you single crochet in the second chain from hook. Uh, and then the next 29, so you do 30 single crochet, and then you do 30 half double crochet, and then you do 40 double crochet. And the way that you put it together, you actually form it right over top um, of the tail to make sure that the shape is going to work out. But what I've done here is all I've done is pinched, pinched the top and sewn those pieces together to make a little starting point. And then I want to have the right side of the work be on the outside, because I think it will just look nicer on the shell. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start uh, attaching a 
little piece of the tail there. I'm just going to start wrapping it around and I'm just, uh, just attaching as I go. It's a little tangly. It's kind of something you do more by feel than <laughs> it's hard to explain. But I'm just going through the single crochet and then attaching. Now I've got my finger kind of stuck in here. What you want to do is you want to start forming it over top of the tail so that the way you're attaching it will make it fit nice and snug. But not too snug because you need to be able to get it over and underneath. So I'm just going to start spiraling around, which is why I called it the spiral. And grabbing the next stitch from the from the bottom of the loop here. Everything's getting tangled on me here. There we go. And then what you might need to do is you might need to skip a, a stitch or two in order to widen, in order to widen the hole. You can see it start to form here. Don't mind that loose end. You can see it start to form over the top here. And so I started with a single crochet section and then it'll expand into half double and then double. I just thought I gave it some variance so that, you know, shells are usually tighter at the top and then looser at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep my finger in there. Go around a little bit more. And then check in and see how I'm doing. Again, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's more just getting a feel for forming that shape over top of the tail. And I tend to be skipping one single crochet uh, from the tail part I'm sewing in every stitch or two. Again, that will make sure that it's widening. It's going to widen to the base and then it's got to cinch in so that it will actually secure. So I'll keep working at this for a while and come back to you. Okay, now I have a finished assembly in the spiral shell. So what I did with it, again, I created a little tip and then I started sewing around in the spiral. And there you have a fully assembled Hermit Crab with the Spiral Shell based on the pattern on my Homemade by Giggles blog. Free pattern is free. Uh, you can feel free to add a smile, add any embellishments you want, make the different kinds of shells in whatever colors you want. There's really no limit to the number of customizations you can make. And that makes it a really fun project overall. And I think uh, hopefully this will help clear up any questions people have. But feel free to ask questions on the blog. I've had some people ask questions that have led to, to some pattern corrections, as well as uh, just general questions that I've been able to answer. And uh, I'll try to be as responsive as I can. So again, if you go on my blog, it's uh, homemadebygiggles.blogspot.com. And if you go online, I'm also on Facebook. My name is Homemade by Giggles. And you can find me on Instagram at Homemade by Giggles. And you can find me on Twitter as well, at Homemade Giggles. Thanks a lot, and have a great day. Happy crafting, everybody.